Shalom, shalom, everyone who has joined me today for yet another lesson and teaching out of the Word of God. Thank you, Father, for the breath in our bodies and capabilities to join together again for another teaching. Amen. This is Deacon Sampson, and I'm glad you tuned in with me to join in for another Breaking the Bread of the Word of God. And this one is going to be a very interesting one because, uh, you know, a lot of our actions are teachers to us. A lot of our situations and encounters in life uh, bring to our attention information, knowledge, awareness that wasn't there before the situation came along to make you aware of it, correct? Okay, check this out. I, in my youth, and uh, I finally got to the 50-year mark, just to give you an idea how long ago that was from then to now, but in my youth, up until my adult years, I, uh, I've only had one dog. Give me? I've only had one dog at a time. Let me put it like that. Not just one dog, but one dog at a time during the intervals that I did on a possessed one. But, uh, as of this last two year, well, year and a half or so, I've had the opportunity to have up uh, uh, up to the quantity of six dogs at a time, at one, you know this owning now, because I had my long time faithful old dog uh, Lodi Bell. And uh, she's been with me about seven years, a little old, yeah, about seven years now. But for the majority of the time I've had her, she, from the pup until, uh, you know, until her adult years as a dog, she's always been a house dog because we were in apartments or whatever and really didn't have the ability to put her out. And I, I took care of her like she was my own little child or something. I'm sharing something with y'all, so pay attention now. Check this out. Up until last year or so, I've only had that one dog. My wife and I were going on a trip and, and running some errands, and we saw two little pit bull puppies. They were allegedly brothers of the same litter. So time gone thing happened. We get acquire those two. So that's three. Then my Lodi Bell have, th she gets uh, uh, in heat and end up with pregnant and have a litter of three puppies. So that makes the six. Like I said, I'm sharing something with y'all, so please bear with me just a moment. We finna get into the lesson. I, uh, so now I'm having the experience of more than one canine dog at this possession of the animal and now I get the chance to see the true characteristics of a dog. You hear me? I never knew dogs were so possessive. I never knew dogs were so jealous. I never knew dogs were so nasty. I never knew so many informative things that I have found out now since possessing the six dog up to six dogs that I never knew or encountered having just the singular of one, okay? Which brings me to the reason of this lesson or this teaching today. With all that I found out about a dog, I don't want no dog no more after, I, after these pass or get rid of or whatever happened to them. I don't want no more dogs. I've had my fill of dogs, okay? Dogs are a mandatory responsibility from 
puppy until adulthood, just like a baby, a mandatory baby responsibility. But these dogs, you they can't fend and do for themselves, so you are mandated to care for them and obligated to care for them in the midst of their own innate nature. You understand what I'm sharing with you? Okay, I gave you that little backdrop story just to get you to understand where we're going in this lesson. And the lesson, as you saw in the title of it is, and you want a the dog in your house? Really? And you want the dog in your house? <laughs> really? Not just the physical dog, but the attributes and the traits of, or that spirit of a dog, period. You want that in your house. You want the dog in your house pooping and urinating all over the place. You want the dog in your house when they get mad at you tearing up your personal possessions. Not singling out anybody else in the house, but whom the dog is mad at. That's who they tap their belongings or possessions. You want that dog attacking your friends or loved ones. Or you want the dog running off and not minding, coming when you call them. But you mandated to feed them, mandated to give them water, mandated to give them medicine, mandated to give them toys, whatever little trinkets that you feel that the dog may want. You have su su sublimed yourself to trying to resort to thinking on the behalf of the dog as though the dog has the same sentiments and emotions that you have as, an, as a human being. Follow along with me now, because then you're going to get a better understanding of where we're going in the, in the in the Bible on some of these passages I pulled up to see how the Most High is looking at us and referring to us as dogs. You understand what I'm trying to share with you? Okay, so let's get off into this lesson, and you'll understand the backdrop of the story that I just gave you, and you'll see where I'm coming from. When we get to breaking these passages down. So I thank you for joining in with me today. Get your pens. Get your pads. Your Bibles. Cording devices. Whatever you need to get comfortable. Because we finna break down. And you want the dog. In your house. <laughs> really? You really want that dog in your house. You ready? Alright let's begin. We're going to start today at uh, Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, and we're going to begin at 23, 23, verse 18. Scroll down and pick it up at verse 18. And it reads, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord, the Spirit of God, thy God, for any vow, for any vow, for even both of these are abomination unto the Spirit of God, thy God. You see that? Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord, of the Spirit of God, thy God, for any vow. For even both of these, both these are abomination, abomination unto the Lord, thy God. You see what's on your screen, people, correct? Let's run over here to Deuteronomy 7, and let's pick it up here, verse 26. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, 
but thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt what? Utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. What's a cursed thing? That abominable thing that you bring it into the house. Because now you contaminating yourself. And now you defiling yourself with the, the abomination of whatever it is that you're bringing in to your house. Okay? And we know that abomination is what? Most hated, most hateful, most wicked. Okay? Now let's go on and break the rest of this lesson now. Since we got that cornerstone laid, we get a better understanding, okay? Turn with me over, if you don't mind, the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. And we're going to go to chapter 8. And we're going to scroll down and pick it up at verse 26. Okay? And here it is right here. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do, for what we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Spirit of God our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? So that which is most hated, if it's abominable to the father they got some things that are abomination to other people and abomination unto us as well but i'm showing you abomination now let's go over here to leviticus because we don't want this in our homes we don't want to be uh 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 played or uh defiled with Anything that father frowns upon. Amen. Leviticus 18. And we want to scroll down and pick it up at verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Now we know that dogs will hump on each other if they boys. Sniff each other if they boys. They uh, uh, lick on each other if they girls. It doesn't matter what uh, 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 lineage or breed that the canine is in. We know that the canine would do what? Interact with one another, lay with one another to what? Fulfill its uh, canine or lust. 20, chapter 20, and we want verse 13. Verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall what? Surely be put to death. Their blood shall be what? Upon them. The blood shall be upon them. Now we have an instruction here. A man shall not lie with mankind, but inside the human race, we have folks that defy this instruction, huh? I know you see similar tools of illustration of this act around you in, in life and in society. We got the LGBT community that 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 say that Black Lives Matter, and you have to, they have to be inclusive in the 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 norms of humanity to for uh, uh, equality and rights and acceptance. But Father say that we shouldn't do this, so this shouldn't be named amongst us as a people, man. Twenty two. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy that was just 20 and 13 did I do 20 and 13 yeah okay so now we're going to Deuteronomy 7 Deuteronomy 7 
And let's scroll down and pick it up at 25. Deuteronomy 7 and 25 right here. The graven images of their gods shall ye what? Burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire, shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is what? An abomination to the Lord thy God. You see that? Now Deuteronomy 22. Let's go over here to Deuteronomy 22. And let's scroll down and pick it up in verse 5. And it reads, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on what? A woman's garment. For all that do so, what? Are abomination unto the Lord thy God. But again, we have similar tools and illustrations all around us in society that are the antithesis of this. They embrace it as though it's a norm. And they frown upon you and look at it, look at you as though you crazy because you're not doing what? The same exact thing. They looking at you like you're the weird one because you're abstaining from these things. Amen. Let's turn over to Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Proverbs 3 and 32. Proverbs 3. And let's scroll down and pick it up at verse 32. And it reads, For the forward is abomination to the Lord, but his what? Secret is with the, the righteous. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. And in this chapter, we're going to do verse 9 and then verse 26. We're going to do verse 9 and then verse 26 of 15. Amen. And it reads, The way of the wicked, the wicked, the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, the Spirit of God, thy guy. But he loveth him that followeth after obedience or righteousness. Verse 26. Verse 26, right here. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination. The thoughts, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Spirit of God. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. The words of the pure are pleasant words. And if you are pure, that means you have the words that are pure or what? The Spirit of God's words. The Creator's words. His words are what make you pure. His words are what wash you and cleanse you. But we're going to touch that in a moment. Let's go on and continue reading. Get some more understanding. Second Samuel. We're going to turn over here to Second Samuel. And we're going to go to chapter 13. Chapter 13. And we want to pick it up and read 10 through 12. We're going to read 10 through 12. Second Samuel. 13, 10 through 12. And it reads, And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them unto the chamber of Amnon, her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother. 
do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel, for no such thing ought to be done, ought to be done in, well, Israel. Do not do this folly. Don't do this folly, this lack of understanding. Don't do this lack of understanding. You see that? Let's go over here to Joshua. The book of Joshua. The book of Joshua. Chapter 7. I want to scroll down and pick it up at verse 15. Okay? Are y'all able to uh, follow along with me clearly? All right, all right, all right. I hope this is making sense to you. If not, we got a few more passages that just may drive the understanding of it home for you, okay? All right, follow along with me. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing, the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he had, because he what has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. Now, uh, earlier in the in the lesson when we first started out, up there in I want to say that was Exodus eight and twenty six. Let me run back over here real quick just to make sure. I want to make sure if that was where it was in that passage. Because, see, the book, the book is a witness unto itself. No, not that one. Was it Leviticus? Was it Leviticus 18? I'm sharing this with you to show this. This is how we're supposed to get an understanding of the book. Because, see, we just read something in Joshua 715 that was already addressed or touched, and it allured. I not lie with mankind. I don't know. So it was Deuteronomy. It must have been Deuteronomy 7. Must have been Deuteronomy 726. 726. Was it 726? Need this shit that I bring it about. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Right here. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou what? Be a cursed thing like it. You see that? 726. So let's precept that. Deuteronomy, I'm doing it as well, 7, 26, and let's go back to, keep this in mind, neither shalt thou bring an abomination into the house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt what? Utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor, hate it, for it is a cursed thing, a cursed thing, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Now let's go back over here to Joshua. Okay, Joshua, book of Joshua, 7, and go back to 15, way well, yeah, 15 right here. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing. If you bring it into the house and say you're going to be cursed thing like it, right? Now it's telling us here, and it shall be that he that is taken with with the accursed thing that you brought into your house, shall be burnt with fire. And he and all that he had. You see that? This is why I say, and you want the dog in your house? Really? If the dog is an abomination or the dog is a filthy, unclean thing, and it's, it, 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 some of its characteristics and actions are an abomination unto the Most High, the dog is an abomination, right? 
Evidently. I mean, it's, 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 it's simple geometry. But the thing is, Father's telling us that the accursed thing shall be burnt. And he that is taken with the accursed thing. So if you're embracing the dog, its spirit, its characteristics, that's in people, those type of people, you are associating and attaching yourself to the accursed thing, amen? And you don't want to be taken with that. Let's go on and get a little bit more understanding, Psalms. <laughs> book of Psalms, and we want to go down to chapter 49, and pick it up at verse 13, and it reads, this is their, their way, excuse me, this, their way is their folly, yet their posterity approve their sayings. This, their way, is their folly. Yet their posterity approve their sayings. Think on it. Think on it. Birds of a feather flock together. Where two join together, let they walk in the group. Their posterity approve their sayings. Amen. You see it. Let's go over here to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. I apologize. Ecclesiastes. Right here. And we want two, chapter two, and we want to scroll down and pick it up at well, verse 13, verse 13, right here. Then I saw that wisdom ex excelleth folly, as far as light excelleth darkness. Let's run that back. Then I saw that wisdom, wisdom excelleth folly, lack of understanding. As far as comparison, far as comparison light excelleth darkness. Which brings me to remember, this ain't in my notes, but I, but just reading it just now, that right there, the way that said, it's a, it's another passage that'll give us a better understanding. Uh, to 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 better comprehend this. And I believe this here going to drive the understanding home for us. And we want to pin this in with this. Uh, Ecclesiastics 2 and 13. Write this down. Write this down just to get an understanding of the, the, the opposite ends of the spectrum. Or the opposite ends of the understand, uh, you know, the the the, the gauge. Psalms one hundred three, and we want to go to Psalm one hundred three and twelve, I believe. Psalms one hundred three. It's real quick because see, we want to get some clarification here. And this is a teaching, this is a lesson, this is a class. And we want to make sure that we get crisp, clear understanding. And we don't leave any ambiguity. Amen.
103 and 12. Yeah, here it is. Psalms 103 and 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he what? Removed our transgression from us. So just slow on that for a moment. As far as the east is from the west, if you go in one direction, you go in that direction. If you go in east, you're traveling away from the west. But if you turn around and go back west, you're traveling away from the east. So as far as it is that you can go west from the east, is how far, let's go back over here to Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 2, 13, to 13, then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly. As far as light, excel in darkness. You see the same understanding there? The same language there? Huh? As far as the east is from the west, as far as light is from darkness, wisdom and folly is two different ends of the spectrum. Amen? Is that understood? Did everybody get that? Is, is anybody hung up on that? If so, we can get a little bit more clarification on it. You know, a little later on, just... Pin it down. If you have a question about it, we're discussing and breaking down a little bit further later on. But let's go on with the lesson right now. Okay? Let's go to Ecclesiastes. And we want to pick it up at chapter 7. And we want 25 first. I applied my heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. Verse 20. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Everybody. Everybody has done some type of wrong. If you put a crack in a, in a if there's a, a flaw in a mirror, it's flawed. No matter how small or inconspicuous you may try to make it, any flaw is flawed. If there's any type of flaw in a supposedly pure diamond, it's flawed. It's not a pure diamond anymore. Man, let's go over here to Proverbs 13. Proverbs. And we want to go to 13. And we want to pick it up at verse 16. Every prudent man deal it with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge. They're going to do things strategically, informatively, edu with education, and with uh, 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 trainability. You understand? They're going to do it properly. But a fool makes known, lay it wide open, that he what? He don't know what he's doing. Proverbs 14, Proverbs 14, we must already be right there, Proverbs 14, and 8 first, and then verse 18, the next one is verse 18, 14, 8, and 18, and it reads, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. But the folly of fools is deceit. 18. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. 
You see that, people? Jeremiah 8 and 12. Jeremiah go to chapter 8. And we want to pick it up at verse 12. Verse 12. Right here. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Is asking you, were they? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they what? They fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. In the time of their visitation, they shall what? Be cast down, said the Spirit of God. Genesis 18 and 4. Genesis 18, 18 and verse 4. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet Let and rest yourselves under the tree. Exodus 30. Exodus 30, right there, 20 through 21. Exodus 30, 20 through 21. Oops. Right there. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall what? Wash with water. They shall wash with water. When? When they go in the tabernacle. They, excuse me, that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. So they shall wash their hands, powers, and their feet, desires, that they would die not. And it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. We shall wash ourselves with this knowledge. Wash our hands, our powers, and our desires with this knowledge. The knowledge of what? God. The knowledge of God. Psalms 30, we want Psalms 30, Psalms 30, bam, right there, 20 through 21, oh, excuse me, Psalms. Oh my goodness. Oh no, that was Exodus. I apologize, baby. Psalms 51. Psalm 51. I ain't gonna scroll to it. I'm gonna just catch it. Psalm 51 and 7. Okay. Psalm 51 and 7. And it reads, Purge me with hyssop, hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall what? Be whiter than snow. John, the book of John, the book of John, and we want to pick it up. Chapter 13. Chapter 13, and the first one we want is 5. 5. We're going to do 5, 8, verse 10, and verse 14. 
5, 8, 10, 14. And it reads, After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe with the towel wherewith he was girded. See that? He washed their feet. He washed their desires. Eight. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. This ought to terrify some of us. Because, see, some of us are holding the mind state characteristics or the spirit of a dog and are refusing to be washed with the word. You understand what I'm told you? And Jesus is saying here that if I wash you not, if I don't wash you with this word, I don't cleanse your desires, you have no part with me. You see that? Ten. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. He said that, that is, Jesus said to him, he that is washed, he that is cleansed, needeth not only to wash his feet, his desires, but is clean every whit, every part. And you are clean, but not all. Because he knew somebody was going to be treacherous toward him. But you go read that story for yourself. We're here to find out about these daggum dogs. And make sure that we're not being part of the K-9 community. You understand, <laughs> you understand what I'm told you? 14 reads, If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, desire, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Ephesians 5 and 26. Go to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Right there. Ephesians 5. And we're going to scroll down and pick it up. 26. What are we washing with? 26 reads, That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Remember we saw, uh, we read that uh, when they go in the sanctuary, get ready to go in the congregation, uh, that they were washed with the water. And now he's coming back and witnessing himself saying that the uh, that he might sanctify, set apart, and cleanse it with what? With the washing of water by the word. The washing of knowledge by the word. The word that those instruction commandments that come from the most high's mouth through his word, his spirit. Amen. That's 26. Titus. The book of Titus. And we want three, three, and five. And it reads, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the what? Washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You see that? Now, after he done put this washing and cleansing on, he done washed our feet, he done washed and rege regenerated us, and done renewed us by the Holy Spirit. You see that? Now, let's go and see what some of us, you know, us, choose to do and respond to that. Second Peter 2. 
two and twenty two. And I'm sharing what you passed just straight out the book. And you ought to have your books to be able to read along with me to see that I'm not conjuring up anything, that these uh, 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 traits are being described in our book to see why we're being referred to as dogs or what is referred to why the dog is being referred to and why should we should cleanse ourselves and make sure that we're in right standing before the Most High so we won't be what? Classified as a dog. Amen? 2 Peter 2, 22 reads, but it, is, but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Remember I mentioned earlier about that innate nature? And see, one of them, the, the, the one dog is, a, you pay more attention to the one dog when you own it. But to have a pack, a group of dogs, a pack of dogs, that intensifies the labor of responsibility on you to care for them. And then they're being apprehensive and irresponsible or unresponsive to your instruction. And that means you got to uh, 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 drive home your training and your educating them to your standard. But a lot of those dogs are unbreakable. And they want to what? Hold on to their true nature is why you got so many abandoned dogs running in the, in in these uh, domesticated communities now, which gives what the dog catcher his job or her job because they gotta go what corral and round up and 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 gather up all these what abandoned stray animals that are running around causing havoc in their true nature being what. Turn into their vomit again. Their true nature is a dog. Digging holes, tearing up stuff, eating wherever they can and want to, humping on everything they want to. You understand? Proverbs. Proverbs 26. Book of Proverbs. Proverbs 26, and we want to scroll down and pick it up at verse 11. 26 and verse 11. As a dog returning to his vomit. You see that? That was the proverb that was referred to. As a, as a dog returning to his vomit, so a fool Return to his folly. Remember, I just said we don't want these traits of a dog in us or to be categorized as a as a dog returning to his vomit. Comparison as a dog. Comparison a dog returning to his vomit. So a fool returning to his folly. Oh, as soon as God give you insight, and knowledge on something, and, and and bring you up out of that Egypt, that bondage. That, that 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 darkness, that no knowledge, and give you the information in which you should conduct yourself and walk, uh, uh, obey, or keep his instruction thereby, you do what? Return back to going to the same environments, going back to those same actions and characteristics, you know, as though you haven't been taught anything. And I experienced that with my dogs. I teach them one thing, show them one thing, and they run back to their own true nature and get to, as though I haven't taught them nothing, tearing the wires, eating the wires off my trailer. I need them lights when I run that trailer. You understand? Them folks will give me a ticket without them lights on there if I'm riding at night. And, and, and it's because it's, it's an obstruction to traffic. If can't nobody see my, my trailer because the lights are high. These dogs are causing me problems. Well, what do you think we do it to the, to God spiritually when we disobeying His instruction? Huh? He get frustrated with us the same way. Go over here to Sirach, the Book of Sirach. Book of Sirach. Bam! There you go. 
34 and 25. The book of Sirach, 34 and 25. He that washeth himself after the touching of a dead body, if he touches it again, what availeth his washing? What good did it do to go through getting all cleaned up? Just to go back. Remember the dog returned to vomit? The 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 the, the, the sow back to her wallowing in the mire. That's what it's saying here. For he that washeth himself, cleanseth himself with the washing and regeneration of the word, or the water, which is the word. He that washeth himself after touching a, of a dead body, if he touches it again, what availeth his washing? What you wash yourself for? Just go. Uh, uh, ooh, let me slow down. Cause see, it reminds me of a passage. And if I come, if I quote it, I'm gonna have to go and go pull it up. Ah, I gotta go pull it up. Okay, I got to. This is not in my notes, so I gotta pull this up. Hold on, give me just a second. Give me just a second. Hebrews. So put here with your Sirach. Put here with your Sirach 34 and 25. Put here Hebrews. Because I'm doing it as well. Like I say, this wasn't in the teaching. But I got to put this here since it came up. Okay, Hebrews 6 and 6. Hebrews 6 and 6. This is this is impromptu teaching here, y'all. Because like I say, this wasn't uh this wasn't in my notes. But it goes together. Hebrews 66. Six. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and what? Put him to an open shame. Matter of fact, let's go and read this whole thing. We're going to take it from 4 to 6. And get a little bit better understanding of that. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were what? Made partakers of the Holy Ghost. That go that washing. You've been washed and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If what? They shall fall away. They go there returning to the wallowing in the mud. Or re dog returning to his vomit. You see that? If they shall fall away to renew them, to renew, remember to regenerate, washing and regenerate, to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. You see that? I hope y'all got some getting some understanding out of it. So that's Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. And you're going to precept that with your Sarai 34 and 25. Amen? That I'll give you a little bit of insight and understanding there. Now let's go over here to Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy. And we want to go to 25. And we want to pick it up at verse 16. Deuteronomy 25 and verse 16. 
I really love this book, man, and learning this word, sharing it with you all who have tuned in to get this insight and understanding. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to gather with you all, the hearers and the doers of the word of God, who are interested in his knowledge, so that we can partake of this information together. You understand the fellowship with one another. So I thank you all. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Amen. All right, Deuteronomy 25 and 16 reads, For all that do such things, what things? Those things that we just read, being returning back unto your old ways once you've been washed, and anything that's abominable, and touching unclean thing. For all that do such things, and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. You see that? You see that? If you're doing these things, if you're doing unrighteously, you're an abomination unto the Lord. In other words, you're a dog. Revelation. Book of Revelation. 21, book of Revelation 21, and we want to scroll down and pick it up at 21, Revelation 21, and we want to pick it up at 21, and we're going to read 21, 24, then 26 through 27. Okay? Revelation 21, 21, 24, 26 through 27. And 21 reads, And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold as comparison it was transparent glass okay 24 and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it see that 26 through 27. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that what? Defileth. Remember we talked about abominations. And you're being defiled by abomination if you touch the accursed thing. Huh? And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are what? Written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So you got to be cleansed. You got to be washed. You got to be regenerated and renewed in the Holy Ghost. And we read that. Were y'all paying attention when we read that? Okay. Bringing this to the last few verses. And then we'll be able to conclude the lesson. And I hope you got something out of it. 22, 15, because we don't want to be no dog in the eyesight of the Creator. And anything dog like, dog minded, we want to rid our lives of it, man. 22, 15 reads For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and 
whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. See that? This is what without that temple where they're going to bring the glory in through them 12 gates. The different nations going to bring their glory in through the 12 gates. But you shall not bring nothing defiling into it. For without the 12 gates or no, because they won't get in. You see that? And sorcerers and whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Deuteronomy 12, 31. Deuteronomy 12, 12. And one scroll down here and pick it up at 31. See what the Father said to us. In his word. Thou, you, thou shall not what? Do so unto the Spirit of God thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hated have they done unto their gods. Everything that the Spirit of God, our God, Hate it, which he hated, have they, the heathens, done unto their gods. Then we were carried away captive, Gentiles carried away captive in the mind. So we acquired their lifestyles, their cultures, their living uh, 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 ideals, so on and so forth. We worshiped and praised and, and idolized their gods that have they done unto their gods. We mimic those things for even their sons and daughters. They have burnt in the fire to their gods. You see that? You see that? Nah. Here you go right here. What thing soever I command you? 32. Observe to do it. Thou shall what? Not add thereto, nor diminish from it. You see that? What thing soever I, the Spirit of God, command you? Observe to do it. Thou shall what? Not add thereto, nor diminish from it. There's a standard that has been given unto us people. A standard. God just told us, showed us, that we don't add to it, and we don't take away from it. Because if you do, doing that does what? Make it a lie. And he said, that nothing will enter into the kingdom or into that 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 sanctuary that, that maketh a lie. Nothing will go into either one of those twelve gates that maketh a lie. And if you are demand, adding to or taking away from, then you changing the standard of truth into a lie. And you ain't getting in. You a dog. And you want the dog in your house? You ought to know what your house is. You want the dog in your house? Really? Really? Being drawn away of our own lust and entice? Doing those things that we see around us? Don't mimic everything you see. Because everything you see might not be good. Amen? Stand firm. Growing the power of the word in, our, in his might. Don't lean unto your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Amen. Love you all. That's why I'm coming to share this word with you all. And I want to be able to fellowship with you all. Who obey the truth as I try to commit myself to do it on a daily basis. Let us all join together in the kingdom. Amen.
And with that, I hope you got something about the lesson. Hope it made sense to you. Take another look at how we desire these dogs in our houses. Some of the things that you really truly have to go through dealing with the dog. Amen. Some folks are so obsessed with the dog that they don't see the label. But, hey, it's on you. I bid you all a shalom.